Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on September 4th, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Long-awaited daily update here, having a look at the last two days of imagery. Welcome to another surviving day. No major M-class or X-class solar flares to talk about in any Earth-facing fashion. No major coronal mass ejections either. So no watches for solar storms, but definitely do have a pretty large sunspot region that turning in now. And as well, in the first few images there, watching the northern hemisphere of our sun, massive plasma filament swirling around the north pole of our sun. Having a look at outgoing here, we did have a backside coronal mass ejection from outgoing sunspot region, most likely producing a strong flare. Having a look at multi-spectrum, pointing out the last two days of events, as well notable plasma filaments that we're keeping an eye on. And right now we do have, in the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, pretty sizable coronal hole regions now earth facing another amazing way to see our sun thank you all for watching and pressing play staying aware and prepared with daily events worldwide a few days off thank you all for your patience but we are back six sunspot regions that are earth facing right now having a look at these sunspot regions in motion Looks like the left side there, incoming. Pretty active and volatile regions we're going to be keeping an eye on during the Earth-facing next few days. Current space weather conditions, we are under our one minor radio blackout impacts. Solar winds are coming in at 401 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux showing a lot of C-class range and as well moderate M-class solar flare yesterday. Solar proton flux is still a little bit elevated. Geomagnetic activity hopped up to a KP4 last night. Having a look here at the Space Weather Prediction Center showing their space weather spiral for tonight and into, into the 7th. Geomagnetic instability is prevalent Having a look here, ISWA space prediction spiral, little yellow circle there. Right-hand side is Earth. And all of that cosmic energy coming around. Now let's have a look at LASCO 3. There's that large CME that I showed in the last video update. And as well, as I said, a backside CME there, big halo CME. And that was yesterday. And that's about it. Two large coronal mass ejections. One in a southward fashion. And one on the back side of our sun. Now let's get to earthquakes the past 24 hours. As USGS is reporting just above 200 the last 24 hours. Just recently here reporting a 4.3 ADAC Alaska. Now let's put in, actually, let's put in the last three days, as I have not updated. Let's give you the rundown on earthquakes around the world for the past three days. Philippines seeing some activity this week, 5.3 and a 5.0. As well, deep earthquakes, Tonga region, nothing too crazy, but 550 to 570 kilometer depth, Fiji. 524, and then a 5.3. Actually, the 6.4 in Papua New Guinea was the largest we've seen the last few days. Panguna, Papua New Guinea. 6.4 magnitude. Notable activity across the North American plate, 4.4 there, Riviera's plate. As well, Bend in Oregon, seeing a 4.2 earthquake off the coast of Oregon. Sealy Lake, Montana, 3.5. And as well, a notable earthquake here, Pierreville, Canada, 3.8. And 
That's right, Ottawa, Ontario reporting a 3.8 magnitude earthquake today. 5.0 magnitude earthquake, Iceland as well. That is the southeast region, opposite corner of where the Fagradas Valley volcano is erupting. Notable activity here, South America, 5.3s. East Pacific rise and southern Chile, 4.9 there, Greece. And that's the last three days for earthquakes. Let's have a quick glance at the last seven days. Largest being the 6.4 magnitude earthquake, Papua New Guinea, just a few days ago. Notable activity, Arabian Plate, and as well the Atlantic Plate moving up into Iceland. North American Plate seems to be bombarded by earthquakes right now. The whole plate being surrounded by sizable tectonic movement. Heads up, everybody, and be aware and prepared. Now let's have a look at Typhoon Yagi, as it is forecast here to turn into a Typhoon Category 4 today. That's right, packing winds of over 230 miles per hour with a Category 4 hurt Typhoon. Having a look at satellite imagery, there is a lot of lightning associated with uh, Hurricane Yagi or Typhoon Yagi. Looking at all the lightning flashes here from Windy. Pretty intense typhoon as it quickly developed into a Category 4 typhoon today and will continue to rake its way westward towards Haiko and Isenia, China, South China Sea. Watch as this rakes right into Vietnam, northern Vietnam for the long range, making landfall in Hanoi. Lots of lightning associated with this. Looking at satellite imagery where Typhoon Yagi is a beast. Just look at the size of this storm and the amount of lightning strikes. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Great changes happening on our planet, and they're happening right before our eyes, folks. Our trade winds are changing. High pressure blockade along the west coast of the United States is a little bit peculiar, sending all these low pressure systems northward. And we've already seen a typhoon from Japan make it straight across the Pacific Ocean and it is now making landfall northern BC and Alaska border. Another look here at satellite imagery showing Typhoon Yagi. It is now a, a Category 4 typhoon. So thoughts and prayers going out to everybody that will be affected by this monster. Having a look here at windy.com showing forecast models as it slowly rakes its way westwards towards northern Vietnam and south China. Look at that grinding right up into bay there, into Kinshao, Shangin. Wow. Then watch as this thing moves westward towards India and then gets trapped into the Mongolian mountains. And then watch for the monsoon rains to persist across Myanmar, India, Tibetan Plateau, and then another typhoon in the long range will be heading towards Philippines. This is the most recent model. For Friday the 13th, looks like this thing will be heading northward towards Taiwan, or sorry, towards Taiwan. Now let's have a look at the other typhoon I was talking about right here, just under Alaska right now. And we'll be making landfall tonight. Heavy bands of rain, strong winds, and then another low pressure system. They join forces there through Anchorage. Heavy rains. And then all these systems still coming from the west, riding up over the mountains of our west coast. Look at the long range forecast Friday the 13th there. Big system heading into Alaska. Overlooking North America, multiple systems here. Watch them in motion. 
coming from the northern Pacific. High pressure ridge moving in from most of eastern Canada, but as well, the heat will be moving in as well. We're going to see some pretty cool nights, but over the next few days, things will be warming up in the east, well, from the west to the east, and then by the 15th into the 16th, things will be cooling down. So, hope you enjoyed the show, everybody. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily do. We'll see you next video. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.